So, uh, Steph, uh, I want to thank you for coming on. I'm Cameron Bonzi. I'm the VP of Marketing with Costa Maine Brands, and I'm here with Farmer Steph, who is amazing, number one. Um, and we love talking to her because she's got all kinds of gardening information, passion, and working with kids is a particular specialty of hers. So I can't wait to get into this conversation today. And Steph, as we're talking, I wanted to pull up um, one of your articles because one of the things that uh, you do for us too is you submit a podcast, excuse me, um, you submit a blog to us. And I thought, what a great way to talk to you and kind of use it as a template to have a discussion, but a blog that you've written. And so the, your latest blog goes back to a video series that we also did. Yeah. Um, so it's awesome. And the top 10 kids gardening questions. And I wanted to read your opening paragraph and then get into all the questions. Great. Can we do that? Yeah. Thanks for having me, Cameron. I love our touch bases and I love this topic. This topic, the top 10, you know, pre most frequently asked questions yeah. by kids. I've been farming with kids for over a decade and doing summer camp programs and kids ask the best questions. So I feel like it's like stuff we can all Questions we all ask. Um, it is questions that we all ask. I mean, I, I think we are all kids ultimately, and yeah, and we're getting we're getting. Um, hold on a second here, because as I do this, we're getting. I haven't clicked out of my email, so I'm getting little notifications that people will hear in the background. But we're not perfect on this podcast. We're just trying to be passionate, right? Uh, we try so, to make the plants as perfect as possible. The people are a work in progress. Exactly, exactly. You can control that plant, that small plant environment, but sometimes you can't control the brains of the people on the other side, like yeah. mine. So, the uh, but the so when you submitted this uh, blog to us, um, the the opening paragraph uh, reads at. Farm to Table Kids, I host over 400 kids each summer during farm camp season. We grow organic veggies and flowers and cook and craft with nature. It is the absolute best way to spend summer days and I am forever grateful to the families that prioritize nature-based learning. Mother Nature is the best teacher we have and kids are the best students because they immerse themselves in nature and ask the best questions. That was the paragraph when I read it. I was like, you know what? That passion, uh, we need to capture that. And, um, you know, we, that's what we need to highlight. So Thanks, that's Cameron. where I want to start. I want to start yes. with that. Let's go. So the, uh, and I, you know, again, people can hear little beeps in the background. I'm trying to shut off all the, equipment that I have. I want to get back to nature instead of be sitting here on a computer. <laughs> I hear you. You might hear birds in my background, but to be expected. Yeah. And you're outside. You're able to sit outside at your house. Beautiful day. I'm already four <laughs> hours deep into the garden day, Cameron. I'm happy. I know. A, a I know. Are you, are you trying to make me feel bad? Because I'm not. Is that not what you're all. trying to say? Not at all. <laughs> so I want to start with number one. OK, what seeds should start uh, indoors? Mm. OK, so everybody wants a successful garden season. Um, the best thing you can do to have a successful garden season to start is to not stress out your plants once you get them going. So either there are two things you can do. Either know what you want to grow and go to your local nursery and get your seedlings there, or you can start your seeds yourself um, on your own time in your own place. I love starting seeds indoors. It's, it's such a great activity to do with kids of all ages, whether you have a 13 year old or a three year old. It's so much fun. So there are different ways that you would start the seeds if there's a 13 versus a three year old. But regardless, every kid of every age is you should absolutely try to engage them with Mother Nature. So things that you want to start indoors if you live in a frost 
in an environment where you get frost, you really have to be mindful to start things like peppers in February and March, things like tomatoes in April and May. And that's because they have a pepper might take 120 days for its growth cycle. So you have to start that over February vacation is usually my rule of thumb. And then uh, tomatoes, I always start on my birthday, which is March 14th. So those are just little markers that I have in my brain that I use for uh, my garden. But like I said, you can go to places like johnnyseeds.com or Mofka, and they have great online resources where you can put in your zip code and it'll give you an estimated frost free date of when you can plant out and start your seedlings. So I think you just had like a 13 year old walk behind you. That's Farm uh, Girl Autumn. <laughs> uh, we love Farm Girl Autumn. What are your favorite seeds to grow? What's your favorite thing, some of your favorite things to grow in the garden? That we grow from seed. <gasps> Tell the camera. Dahlias. Dahlias, you love? Yeah. Of course. And what kind of vegetables do you like to grow? Peas. Peas. Yes. Awesome. Is this bread expired? So, um. <laughs> 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 I love that. I love that we can actually have in the moment Autumn come by because I haven't really seen Autumn and she's growing. Oh, really? Up, but uh, it's, it's a working uh, farm. <laughs> yeah, and and that's the that's the key is is to be able to have a child of your own that is engaged in that and you're connecting with them. Uh, totally. Through gardening. It's awesome. each but the thing is, so now we are in like we're in the last week of June and some people might think, oh, well, it's too late to start from seed. But that's not the case at all. So there are plants that you do need to start early during like if you live in New England or Maine like we yeah. do. Um, you know, tomato, you're not going to have luck planting by seed unless you like if you started it right now, it's just not enough time. So that's why you have to start it earlier in the spring and winter. But if you wanted to start things from seed right now, things like beans, pumpkins, squash, they do really well. Sunflowers, zinnias, you can grow your fall crops now. So things like, um, you know, I wouldn't do fall radish and spinach because it's still too hot for those things. That's a couple weeks down the road. But you can absolutely plant from seed. Just read the back of your seed packets and I mean, if you ever have a question, throw it in the ground. What's the worst that happens? Well, that's true. And I also, the, the reading the back of the seed packets, the basic instructions, um, a lot of times, you know, that's, it's there. It's right it really there. is there. It's, I so. tell people all the time, don't be intimidated. They're little baby seeds. Like, don't be intimidated by the seeds. Just throw them in the soil and see what happens. Well, we also, we did that, don't be intimidated by starting seeds. We did a video on that, so people can find that online with us, too. Okay. The, um, and then number two, how far apart do I plant? All right. How do so you figure that great. out? So, again, that is all on the back of your seed packets, but when you're planting with kids and when you're, you know, a mom or dad trying to get people engaged, you're not gonna have, you could have a ruler, and if you have rulers out in the garden, that's helpful, but I tell kids by their hand. So you look at a kid's hand, and typically if we're planting peas, peas do not have to be spaced out by any specific measure. If you cluster a bunch of peas together, they're still gonna grow, <laughs> whereas carrots need to be thinned out. But when you're planting with peas, you also, or planting with kids, you also don't want them to throw the entire bag in like one square inch, because they will do that too. So you need to give them rules to follow. So what you wanna do is give them their fingers and their hands to measure by. So usually with peas, I say, okay, put up three fingers. Now a pea is gonna go on this, end and on this end and move it to the next one and this end and this end. When we're doing something like peppers, it needs to be their whole hand. So show me your whole hand. And now pepper's going to go at the start and then it's going to go another hand and then you plant another one. So just ways to make them use their mind, use their body. Don't think that, oh, I don't have a, a ruler here so I can't plant my, my seedlings or seeds. Make it fun for the kids. Literally get your hands dirty. It's so much fun. <laughs> Well, you make it amazingly fun. Um, but also and, uh, be mindful when you're spacing your things out. Also think, you know, okay, cucumbers are going to spread and vine out. But if I'm using a raised bed and I want to plant a whole mix of things in here, they're going to take up all the space. 
So cucumbers also love to climb because it's a vine. So cucumbers, um, any kinds of like Waltham or Metro small butternut squash, um, some kind of, you know, jacky little pumpkins, all those things will do great climbing. Sugar baby watermelons, um, pot of gold melon. So all those things can climb really well and save your space in your garden. So also think about that when you think about spacing. Make pole bean teepees for your for your pole beans. Like use uh, it's not just vertical. Don't just think vertical. Also think I mean horizontal and vertical. So this question seems so basic, you know, and it's something that an adult would be afraid to ask because it's so basic. But how do I, how deep do I plant a seed? Dude, I love this question and the kids yeah. ask all the time and it's the easiest to answer, but probably the number one thing people do wrong and they plant too deep. The reason is you only need to plant three times the width of the seed. So if you think of a carrot seed, a carrot seed is the size of dust. It's the size of dust. That's why you can <laughs> often get them in pellet form and that does help a lot. But um because of that, you barely need to cover it. You do want to cover it because you don't want it to get blown away and you want it to set roots. But keep that in mind. Like a pea, for example, is a lot larger than a carrot seed. So a pea is going to go deeper into the ground than a carrot seed. Um, but it only needs to be three times the width. That is something that, um, again, we have video on that too. Um, but it is, uh, it, it also in a sense relates to the, the next question, because these are questions that we get asked about our soil too, but on top of how deep do you plant the seeds, but what about last year's seeds? If you, can you use last year's seeds? That's a, that's a common question that people ask. I love that question because you know me, Cameron, I love collecting seeds. I love yeah. showing kids how to collect seeds. I love it. So we do a lot of seed collecting. I also, as the nonprofit, we get a lot of seed donations as well. And I'm never sure, am I getting those seeds because they got wet? Am I getting those seeds because they're a couple years old? Like where are those seeds coming from and why are they being donated to us? So a couple things on old seeds. Know where they're coming from and know if they've been exposed to any moisture or extreme heat or cool temps. If your seeds have stayed out of extreme heat and cold temps and have stayed dry, you can absolutely use them. I would say as a rule of thumb that I, I just have found through my own gardening. I think after three years, they tend to have a reduced germination rate by about 10% or so. And so if the seed is like three years plus, I'll throw down maybe double what I would normally just to make sure I have good germination rate on those. Yeah, because that, that's the, the other piece that you've done in the videos that we've done too is, it's throwing down a few extra seeds because of the germination rates and you're never sure what they're going to be. And exactly. yeah. And one of the yeah. things that people always ask me about that we're known for at farm camp is our sunflowers. And people always say, you know, we grow over 5,000 sunflowers. So they say, how do you get to grow so many sunflowers? Mine get eaten by the squirrels all the time. Right. They all get eaten. They do. You do have to throw down a lot of seeds. You really do. And then to keep, if you really do have a lot of deer pressure, what I like to do is get things like the driveway um, poles and put reflector tape on that or keep an AM radio going throughout just to keep the deer away. But those are just tangents. An, a to the, an AM radio. Is yes. That is interesting. Is that is, is that because it's talked? Is that yeah yeah yeah. My grandfather used to do that. He used to leave his radio. It was like battery powered on his like lawn chair down in the garden to keep the deer away. And I had a bunch of deer pressure the other day, and I've held it on NPR since, and we've not had an issue. <laughs> okay. Support NPR. They're saving organic gardens all around the state. <laughs> Well, I just want to say that NPR would be FM radio, okay? It is FM, yeah. <laughs> so it is FM, NPR, yes. So, and then, you know, now we're getting into some topics here that, that I understand a little bit. And, and what, is it, what does amend soil mean? 
So yeah, this is important because it really is so important at the, at the start of each season to amend your soil. Now, does that mean you have to go out and get a pH soil test? No. If you want to get into that sort of thing, you absolutely can, but it doesn't mean that. All it means is to look at your soil and just how does it look? Does it look dry? Does it look sandy? Does it look wet? Does it look like it has a lot of moisture to it? Does it look like plants would be happy there? You know, plants like soil that can retain moisture but not be soggy. They like it to be loose so if you're growing carrots you can actually get them out of the ground eventually. You know, so think about your soil and how it looks. And then at the start of each season, before you get your plants in there, before you make your beds, go ahead and put some organic matter in there. We're really moving away from tilling. Tilling, when you till up the soil, long story short, the rain comes down, it basically erodes all that good top top soil that you have, like all those natural worm castings and loose soil that bugs and stuff had loosened up. So what you want to do is instead of tilling that up, you want to add more delicious organic matter on top of that. So that's where a nice bag of I Love Castine blend, or you can go to your local farm, like a, a place that you know, and get some nice manure or your local nursery and get some compost there. But throw on a bag or two, especially just to refresh your beds and give them a nice little nutritious like start to their season. Yeah, because you're, uh, I always think about it, you're you're kind of disturbing that subway system, that communication system. Yeah, underground especially, that, yeah. You know, and they've got to rebuild that. And you do, um, you lose a lot in that way. Yeah. And when you, when you amend over time, it's going to get down into the soil. I mean, because it's going to rain and all those nutrients are going to figure out they're going to they're going to go in and, and find out they're going to burrow. They're going to be able yeah. to become plant available nutrition. There's going to be a lot of eating and excreting going on that becomes plant available food. So Cameron, I can't tell you just by taking down a few trees on our property and using the natural wood chips from those trees onto the really hard compact soil that we had here. Just the natural activity that was happening under that really nice moist wood chip, like dense wood chip layer, all those worms and bugs and moisture going in there has loosened the soil just in one season in a remarkable way. It's just remarkable. Like really adding organic matter to your soil. I can't think of a better thing to do to start your season. So let's get to you started your season but uh number six is when can i plant my garden yeah so if you live in new england in zone 5b like us usually that's between mother's day and june one so you want to be except if you're looking at like peas and radish and spinach and brassicas then you can plant those as soon as the ground can be worked um so that means if like I remember last year during, I think two years ago, I was able to plant peas on in March. Whereas this year I wasn't able to plant peas until late April. So it really does depend on your weather. But then when you get out to your like really sensitive things, the fun things that we all love, like tomatoes, cucumbers, eggplant, you really do, and your dahlias, you really do have to wait until all frost has passed. And for me, I'm conservative, but I wait until June 1. June 1 and, you know, obviously we're in Maine, um, but being conservative on planting your garden and waiting is key, correct? It really is. Just because if you go out and I, you know, I might have 500 basil plugs and if I plant all those and a frost sweeps through, they're dead. I can't bring those back. You know, you do have a chance of putting some rene or cloth on your tomatoes and dahlias, and they probably wouldn't be that harsh of a frost if you were to cover them. But when I'm growing, you know, 400 tomatoes, I'm not going to stress out and throw re cloth down every time I think it's going to dip on, into frost. I'm just going to wait until June 1. That's excellent. And then, you know, this basic question, it's interesting because we get questions on watering all the time. But the, that other question that a kid would ask and adults ask, too, is how often do I water? Yeah, and it almost is like 
not the trick of the question. It's, it's knowing your audience. So when you're talking to a kid and they ask you that, you have to put it yeah. in their in their terms. And sometimes those are the best terms because <laughs> the easiest to understand. So when I'm explaining that, I say, again, let's look at the water and let's see what the let, what's the plant telling us. So we're going to look at the plant. Are the leaves curled under? Is it yellow? Because if it's yellow, it might be getting too much water. Is it nice and rich green? Is it happy with how it is right now? So we're going to look at the plant and then we're going to look at the soil around it. Is the soil dry? Is the soil wet? Does it have a ring around it? Does it is it wet? Does it have slugs around it? Let's look for those things. And then we're going to put our finger in it. And if our finger into the soil is dry up to our knuckle, we're going to stay with it. We're going to keep it. If it's, oh wait, no, we're putting our yeah, knuckle into minute. the soil. Could you repeat that? Yeah, we're going to do that again. We're putting our finger into the soil up to your middle knuckle, okay? Yep. So your finger is in the soil up to here. And now if you can feel moisture, you're all set. If it's dry, we're going to water, okay? So it's not the first one, it's your middle knuckle. That's that's great. That, and that's, and that's, that's such... explain it to kids because it's not just like, oh, the top of the soil's dry. Let's water. It's how does the plant look? How does the soil look? How does it feel? Okay. And then we we get pests. I mean, you pests taking care of pests in the garden number eight that you have down here. What do you recommend for organic pest management? Yeah. So okay, again, I was gonna sound redundant. You got to go on a morning walk every single day, make yourself your tea or your green drink and go outside for your morning walk. It's going to be the best part of your day. It's going to be great for you and your plants. On that morning walk, you're going to be looking for things like, did it rain? Are things dry? Did we get any deer visitors? Is there a lot of weed pressure today? What do we have to work on today? So you're looking for things like that. When I go on my morning walk, I'm always looking for slugs and aphids especially. So you got to look under leaves. If it has been moist, really look on that soil line under your dahlias and big leafy tomatoes and, and your lettuce and things like that. Slugs love that opportunity. At our farm to table kids, we use our hands. You know we do it. You've seen the pictures. We have contests to see how many kids, how many slugs the kids can catch. And our one day farm kid record is I think 89 slugs they caught. But um, you know, we put them in mason jars and we take them out to the forest. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's great. But, um, you know, people will, will be like, ew, that's not for me. And it might not be. And if you don't like to use your hands to yep. scrape off aphid eggs or to squish squash beetles, there are remedies you could use, like Sluggo is an organic pellet that you can put down that is OMRI certified. Um, but like I said, I... I'm, my son is a stage four cancer survivor. I farm with kids that harvest every single day. I don't use any chemicals. We use our hands and our eyes. So we literally squash. Uh, we know what, what all the beetles look like that are uh, threats to the garden. And we go out and we hand pick them every morning during our garden walk. Well, I, I you know, it's interesting because that is just that hand-eye coordination, that manual dexterity. Uh, that interest in being outdoors and moving is huge too. I've got to say too, Cameron, just because you see a few squash beetles doesn't mean you have an infestation. Just yeah. because you see some doesn't mean you have to, oh my God, go out and spray. Like there's a balance there. Like for, you know, parasitic hornworms, that's like a thing. Like it's so cool when you see a parasitic hornworm that has like, uh, that's been, bitten by a bug that's basically eating it from the inside like it's so cool so there's a balance there you know like if you see aphids but you also see ladybugs there's a balance there the ladybugs are eating the aphids so just because you see some bugs doesn't mean you have to have a radical intervention it also teaches kids like there's a balance and if we stay aware of the things that we can control like the bugs and the squash beetles and rubbing off those eggs when we find them on our sunflower leaves and all those things then we can just tip the scales a little bit in favor of the plants that's awesome and i and i think it's uh, it is that not overreacting Right? Yeah, yeah, don't overreact. Like yeah. everybody's getting a chance here, but you know, if you see a ladybug and then dahlia is infested by aphids, go move the ladybug over there. Sometimes you do have a situation where some, you know, 
black flies are attacking your Brussels sprouts and there's just nothing you can do about that and you need to cover it with reme or cover it with something so that the bugs can't get in there. But again, just because you see something being attacked, please don't get out your, your spraying devices. Use your eyes first. I think that's great advice. And then what, what about your favorite things to grow for kids? You know me, Cameron. It's easy to ask me what are my least favorite things to go <laughs> No, that's the thing. I, I know you're not you're not gonna stop. We only okay. look, try to put a time limit on yourself. Okay. No, so here we go. I'll give it two minutes. Here's my elevator pitch. I've been growing with kids for over a decade. And with my background of being a stage four pediatric cancer mom, I just really have been so mindful about what will kids eat. What will they actually try? Because that's how this all started. I just wanted my kids to eat healthy and feel their hearts light up by being in nature. So what does that? Things that do that, make a pole bean teepee and grow dragon tongue pole beans. They're purple and they have green dots on them. And they look exactly like they're called a dragon tongue. And they're wow. funky and weird. And boys will pick them and be like, they look like a dinosaur. And they do. And you know what? They'll actually try to eat them. And at the farm, we call them no thank you bites. It's when they're curious. They're like, I've never seen a 24 inch European slice and cucumber. Can I try it? Sure, take a bite. If you don't like it, put it in the yeah. compost pile. It's a no thank you bite. You know, the lunchbox, lunchbox peppers, they're picnic peppers. They're seedless and miniature. They come in all different colors and sizes. They're delicious. Kids love them. Do trilogy beans. They're string beans, but they come in green, yellow, and purple. They're awesome for scavenger hunting. For sunflowers, do sunflower and sun gold. <laughs> nope. Teddy bear, teddy bear sunflowers. They're called that because you just want to cuddle with them. They're fuzzy and you pet them. There's sweet Annie peas, um, sugar snap peas, like just everything, rainbow carrots, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> is, is there <laughs> anything else you'd like the to The only things I don't grow are potatoes and eggplants because I can't stand potato beetles. <laughs> oh, so there is a bug that you don't like. All right. I don't like there potato beetles. Yeah. So, and then for uh, this, this last question, number 10, how can we make the soil healthy? And, and I know this will be kind of a cheap post of Coast of Maine, because Coast of Maine does everything right. But That's no, right. I, 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 it's, uh, so tell us what you do at the farm to help right. others. I've spoken about my background, how organic is non-negotiable for me. Um, yep. We add, all we do is add Coast of Maine to our soil. That's it. I don't spray with anything. I don't treat with anything. Anything I amend to the soil is with Coast of Maine products. We use Castine Blend in absolutely everything we grow. Um, yep. Coast of Maine donated four pallets of soil to our sunflower forest. Cameron, you saw it. It wasn't soil. That's it amazing. wasn't dirt. It was clay. And we literally took bags of Coast of Maine and just cut open the tops of them and grew into the bags because the ground was that terrible. And it worked. We couldn't believe it. It worked. And now that land is forever growable, all because yeah. we did that work. So it's one of those things where I love amending soil. I'm working with two different families down the road who are having a hard time. So I'm amending their soil right now. And all that is, is adding organic matter to it. So if you have a situation where you're having a really hard time growing where you're at, work on the foundation. It's like anything else, whether it's your body, your house, your garden, it all happens at the foundation. So start with a good foundation. And that's why we use Coast of Maine. I know that sounds like a plug, but it's it's what we've been gardening with and solely with for four years, and it's been awesome. Well, thank you for saying all that, and it is real. You have used it, um, and we know these types of endorsements are because of the efficacy and the use. So it's awesome, and you know we've been in business since 1996, and Carlos Quijano, who started the company, did it the right way. So it's all good. Are you, look, you're getting distracted. I, I just saw you look up. What, what were you looking at? Somebody looking at you through a window? Adam, she's sending me messages. <laughs> <laughs> through all kinds of medians. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So I'm going to let you go. Uh, this is great. And this is good in information. This 
This blog will be posted in writing with links to the videos that we've done so people can refer to those. Uh, we'll have it in podcast format. Um, you can check out Coast of Maine at www.coastofmaine.com. And Steph, where should people be contacting you? Sure. You can look for more information about Farm to Table Kids at farmtotablekids.org. And all my contact information is there. You can follow me on social channels at Farmer Steph. Excellent. All right. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Cameron. Happy growing.